Get ready for a jaw-dropping glimpse into the dark side of soccer as we reveal 15 professional players who crossed the line and landed themselves behind bars. From a violent abuser who couldn't care less about the consequences of his actions, to a reckless driver who tragically hit an innocent bystander, and even a once great superstar who succumbed to a life of alcohol addiction, these shocking stories will leave you on the edge of your seat. Don't miss out. Number 15. Ronaldinho Ronaldinho is one of the most recognizable faces in football, but unfortunately, he found himself in prison. The star has played for Barcelona, AC Milan, Brazil, and other clubs. He was detained in Paraguay for allegedly using a fake Paraguayan passport. The World Cup winner was arrested alongside Roberto, his brother, in March of 2020 after they arrived in Paraguay's capital city. They were imprisoned afterward. A statement from the country's Ministry of Interior explained that the brothers were arrested and charged with using a public document with false content. Due to legal issues, Brazil's authorities seized Ronaldinho's Spanish and British passports in 2019. However, he had a Paraguayan passport which he claimed was given to him by a local sponsor. He said he didn't know if it was fake and admitted to the honest mistake. The Paraguayan authorities were not okay with his explanation, hence his detention. He now serves time in the same prison with convicted thieves, murderers, and other high-security inmates. The prison authorities say he is in a different part of the facility, however. Whether or not he is kept in a better part of this facility, it doesn't change the fact that his freedom is taken away, and he cannot see sunshine and rainbows as much as he'd love to. He remains an unhappy man but finds a way to remain sane. Ronaldinho still plays in prison with fellow prisoners. Various photos and pictures from prison show him partaking in all football matches and scoring goals. Number 14. Rene Higuita Rene Higuita was a childhood friend of Pablo Escobar, and somehow many thought he had links to the drug lord. He has been known as El Loco for over 30 years. However, he insists he's not crazy. This budding footballer was born into poverty in the Medellin and was raised by his mother because his father disowned him. He was a prolific striker in his heydays, but was later switched to being a goalkeeper. At age 20, he represented Colombia at Copa America. His fearlessness on the pitch forced Francisco Manturana to give him the nickname he still bears today. Francisco believed he was mad in a nice way because he could take penalties as much as other goals. Aside from that, he was ahead of his time. The notion of total football, which suggests that every player on the pitch could play different roles, was propagated at the time, and Higuita was equal to the task. He became the first true sweeper-keeper. It felt like there were 11 players on the field whenever he was in the goalpost. In 1994 World Cup lead-up, he made the mistake that would later see him land in jail and dent his career in one stroke. He was a go-between for Pablo Escobar and fellow drug trafficker Carlos Molina. He helped deliver a ransom that led to the release of Carlos's daughter. Unfortunately, he was paid for his role, and under Colombian law, it was an offense to profit from kidnapping. He was arrested and released seven months later. He protested his detainment, saying he was unaware of kidnapping laws and didn't deserve such treatment. Number 13. Mason Greenwood Everything changed for Mason Greenwood after his girlfriend, Harriet Robson, took to her Instagram story to share photos of her injured body. She showed bruising on her arms, legs, and bloody lips. She also released audio clips of what transpired between her and her boyfriend. The Greater Manchester Police immediately swung into action, arresting the player and taking him into custody for further investigation. He was accused of rape and assault. She claimed that he insisted on having sex even if she didn't want it, saying he doesn't care, and if she refused, he would beat her mercilessly. After his arrest on January 30th, 2022, he was released on bail but re-arrested on October 15th, 2022 for breaching his bail conditions. Since his arrest, the 21-year-old striker has since been suspended from the Premier League club. He's also been suspended from Manchester United, his club. The club told the public that he remains a player but was not part of the squad. However, they'll watch as the legal process unfolds. Nike had initially suspended their relationship with the forward, but later announced it was terminating the contract altogether. Electronic Arts also removed him from active squads on its FIFA 22 game. Number 12. Joey Barton Joey Barton has been a subject of controversy for a while now. In June of 2021, he was charged with attacking a woman and leaving her with a head injury. The assault occurred in a house in Kew, southwest London. A police spokesman confirmed the incident, saying that he would appear in court where his charges would be read. In February, he resumed his new role at League One side Bristol River, leaving his former club Fleetwood. 
He retired from active football in 2018. He played for Manchester City, Burnley, Newcastle, and Queen's Park Rangers. He also appeared for England in a friendly against Spain in 2007. Barton has never been a calm player. During a Christmas party in December of 2004, he lost his temper under horrifying circumstances. After he was dressed as Jimmy Seville, he lost it when Tandy, a youth player, tried to set his shirt on fire. In retaliation, he stuffed a lit cigar in his eye, leaving the young player with a burnt eyelid. City charged Barton with gross misconduct and fined him. Although he apologized to his victim, he was still sued and paid 65,000 euros in damages. His mischief didn't end there. In May 2007, he went violent with Osman Dabo, leaving him with head injuries and a detached retina. The clash ended his time at City and forced him to pay a $25,000 euro fine. He doesn't seem remorseful about his actions, as he still exchanged words with Osman on Twitter. Number 11. Breno Vicinis Rodriguez Borgs, popularly known as Breno, was arrested in 2011 by the German police after a fire gutted his home at a Munich suburb. When the incident happened, he was just joined Bayern Munich from Sao Paulo in 2008. He was believed to have been smoking when the incident happened and taken to the hospital that night to treat for excessive smoke inhalation. The authorities immediately resumed investigating the incident, insisting that the fire was not random. They believed it may have been triggered and wanted to get to the root of it. The fire cost up to $2.05 million in damages. The Baron defender was also accused of concealing evidence. The police said arresting him ensured he answered the arson charges. Days before the incident, Breno consulted a doctor at the Max Planck Psychiatric Institute at the behest of his club. He was suffering from chronic knee pain that would threaten his career. Many Indian football fans know Breno from the Oliver Kahn farewell match at Kolkata. Bayern faced Mon Bagan AC that day but was sent out of the pitch for losing his cool. He kicked Branco Cardozo for committing a foul. The referee gave both players the marching order. Number 10. Jamie Vardy Jamie Vardy was a regular visitor to the police station as a youngster. While he regretted some of these moves growing up, he insists they helped him shape the person he is today. He admitted he was a bad teenager but had learned the hard way. The striker, in an interview, noted that he was just adjusting to the new environment at St. George's Park. However, he was bold enough to talk about his past in his first official appearance as an England player. He noted that he was convicted as a teenager after standing up for a deaf friend. Some youths in the neighborhood were mocking him in the street because of his disability, but Vardy couldn't resist it. While he was not proud of how he defended him, he was satisfied with the why. He loved standing up for his mates, even if it got him in trouble. He admitted to being a hard boy that did more than a regular 20-year-old should do. While his mates were locked at home, he went out often and had a big DVD collection. Vardy is the first Leicester City player to represent England's senior team since Ian Walker in 2011. He's been rewarded for his combative qualities on the pitch with his first call-up to the senior squad. Like many talented players, he didn't think he would move beyond the past to make it to the Premier League. Number 9. William Ribeiro Sometimes it's hard to control one's temper when faced with a difficult situation. Footballers are known for losing their cool and acting outside the confines of the law when things don't go in their favor. William Ribeiro, a Brazilian footballer, was arrested and sacked by his club after kicking a referee in the head. His actions caused the referee to be unconscious. Ribeiro attacked him again after awarding a foul against the player during an away match at Guarani. He kicked Rodrigo Crivellalo twice, with the second one throwing him to the ground players were quick to call for medical assistance for the victim. The match was suspended and the referee was taken to the hospital. Ribeiro was arrested at the stadium but was later released on bail. After Cravalho was released from the hospital, he confirmed that the attack was so violent that he couldn't withstand it. He also didn't have a chance to defend himself. This tragic attack occurred on sports club Sao Paulo's 113th anniversary. The club called it one of the saddest events in history. As expected, Ribeiro was fired, and the club assured spectators that it would investigate the facts and deal with the issues that, with the respective sanctions. The small club from Rio Grande, 200 miles south of the state capital, plays in the second division of the Rio Grande to Salt State Championship. The match was halted and continued the next day. Number 8. Jerome Boteng Jerome Boteng's life changed in 2021 after a court found him guilty of domestic violence. The former Germany and Bayern Munich football player was ordered to pay for his former partner 1.8 million euros. The prosecutor in the case told the court that Sharon Sendler, his former partner, was a victim of domestic violence. Bodang, on the other end, denied the allegations of abuse. In July 2018, Sendler also claimed that he hit her on vacation in the Turks and Caicos Islands. The court also slammed him with charges of willful bodily harm and verbal abuse against Sendler. Her allegations were too much. She also said the football star bit her head, boxed her, beat her, and insulted her on different occasions. 
On his part, he told the court that his former partner was too aggressive and insulting during a dispute after a game of cards. She hit him and injured his lip. Fortunately, she fell when he pushed her away from him. He insisted that he had never hit her. Both have been going back and forth with the allegations, with Bonang denying most of them. He would shake his head vehemently in court whenever she reeled out her accusations. The embattled player suggested that she was only bringing up this case against him to boost her chances of success in a dispute over their children's custody. He no longer plays for Bayern as the club declined to extend his contract. Number 7. Adam Chapman Adam Chapman was texting while driving and lost control of the steering. As a result, he crashed into a pensioner in his car. The man of the match at Wembley when his team, Oxford United, beat York City to earn promotion back to the Football League. His arrest jeopardized his career because he was sentenced to 30 months in prison. His lawyers argued for a shorter term, considering the star's future. The court affirmed that Chapman sent at least 15 messages on his BlackBerry phone before crashing into Tom Bryan's car. Not only was he texting, but he was also driving on the wrong side of the road. The 77-year-old pensioner had no time to react to the accident. He died from internal injuries, while Chapman was unhurt. The football star had passed his driving test only a few weeks earlier and was new to the road. The pensioner's partner was also in the car and was injured on her wrist. He pleaded guilty to the one-count charge of causing death by dangerous driving and was detained on a youth offender's institution and banned from driving for five years. Although his lawyers argued that he was the prospect of being a full international player for his country, the judge insisted that he posed a substantial danger to others and he must face a custodial sentence. After serving his time, he was released and joined his team at Oxford United. His club supported him throughout the period and hailed his courage during the tough time. Number 6. James Cottrell James Cottrell smashed an opponent's jaw during an FA Cup match in 2007. He was sentenced to four months in prison for the incident. This case makes for the first time in recent history an England player is jailed for an offense on the pitch. Cottrell pled guilty to punching Sean Rigg and causing him bodily harm during the first round match. 30 minutes into the game, he fractured his victim's jaw in two places. Doctors say Rigg's jaw will be held together with metal plates for the rest of his life. Television cameras captured the assault and streamed it for millions to see. The court emphasized that violence on the field of play would not be tolerated. However, Cottrell's decision to plead guilty shows he was remorseful. The court held that he was ashamed of his actions, club, profession, and family. Rigg was 18 then and drank through a straw and ate with a teaspoon after the blow. His attacker resigned shortly after the event and wrote personal letters to Rigg and Bristol Rovers, his club, apologizing for his behavior. The referee did not see the assault because Cottrell hit Rigg from behind. Cottrell was fined 270 euros and was suspended by the FA. He was ordered to work as an apprentice table joiner during the period of his suspension. Number 5. Ian Wright Ian Wright is an English television and radio personality. He used to be a professional footballer when he was younger. He played for Crystal Palace for six years and Arsenal for seven years. He won the European Cup Winners' Cup and Premier League Championship and another domestic cup with Arsenal during his heydays. He is famous for his speed, finishing, and ferocity. Aside from gaining 33 caps for the England national team, he has over 287 goals to his name. There are rumors about him being implicated in Ian Wright's scandal. Thankfully, he has not been detained, but the former footballer admitted to being taken into custody when he was only 19. He spent two weeks in the Chelmsford prison for paying for charges for driving without insurance or tax. He claimed he didn't have the money then and his wife was pregnant with their first child. After being trapped in a cell, he seized the opportunity to cry to God to help him become a successful footballer. All of this is in his past as he now enjoys retirement. However, he still participates in other football-related activities like punditry roles for Sky Sports. He analyzes games and shares his experiences playing professionally many years ago. You can check out his podcast, Righty's House, to hear his opinions and current sports culture issues. Number 4. Peter Swan Peter Swan will be remembered as a skilled footballer, but one whose career was ruined by a scandal. There's one regret Peter Swan had until his death, it was that many believed he fixed a football match. He had told the press that there was never any fixing between him and his teammates Tony Kay and David Bronco Lane. Some time ago, three of them once bet on their team to lose. Lane had told them that they could make so much money from footballing betting, so they gave it a shot. After they lost the match, they tried to cover their bonuses for fear that someone would accuse them of match-fixing. None conceded a penalty, scored an own goal, or coasted in the December 1962 game. In fact, Kay was named the man of the match. 
They did their best to win the match but lost, each made 100 euros profit from a 50 euros bet at odds of 2 to 1. They were later found guilty of match fixing, an announcement that shocked the nation. The friends were sentenced to four months in prison and banned from football for life. Swan was the best center half in England at the time. It was said that nothing could go past him in the air as he was so swift. He was famous for rising through the Hillsborough ranks and debuting at 19 years old. He was athletic and intimidating to other players. His life ban was lifted in 1972, and he returned to Sheffield amid cheers from his fans. He lived for many years with Alzheimer's, reinforcing the connection between the disease and heading the ball. Number 3. Lee Hughes Following a trial at Coventry Crown Court in 2004, a jury jailed Lee Hughes for six years after finding him guilty, causing death by dangerous driving. It took only 90 minutes to convict him. He plowed his supercharged Mercedes Sports into another car near his home, killing a father of four walking on foot. His relatives were satisfied with the judgment because it meant that the culprit was brought to book. The footballer didn't seem to be bothered by the judgment and showed no signs of remorse. However, his wife wept. She was more emotional than anyone else. She told the press how his absence affected her and the family. She described him as loving, caring, and a good father who had won numerous trophies in each sport. Hughes admitted drinking two whiskeys at a local pub's before driving home. The crash occurred on November 23rd while Hughes drove himself and four friends home from visiting two pubs. It was alleged that his wife drove him more than 20 miles away to take a breath test because he was over the limit. He pleaded guilty to two counts of failing to stop after an accident and failing to report an accident. Number 2. Mickey Thomas Mickey Thomas was a former Welsh international footballer given an 18-month jail sentence for giving fake banknotes to young soccer apprentices. The court was embarrassed by the case, saying he ought to have set the pace for the younger generation and warned them about the dangers of falling into such, ten such temptations. The judge decried how Thomas's actions betrayed the trust of his employers. The court was told how he handed the young YTS player a fake $20 and $10 note. He was convicted after a two-day trial. While he did not bring the forgeries into existence, his crime was to use them. His counsel asked the judge to keep the sentence to a minimum since the prison was a devastating place for a footballer to be. His counsel said the client was more concerned about how his elderly mother, who has cancer, will take the news of his sentence. Mickey Thomas earned less than other star players despite being an outstanding star. Number 1. George Best George Best is the former Man U legend, had been in the news for many wrong reasons. In 2003, he was arrested after an altercation with a tabloid newspaper cameraman he caught taking photos of him at a pub. After a liver transplant the previous year, he had vowed to stop drinking but didn't keep to his words. He assaulted the photographer and caused him bodily harm. Both men were arrested but not remanded in custody. The former superstar did not react to the news of his arrest. However, this police spokeswoman charged with driving while exceeding the alcohol limit. Despite being a public figure, the star cannot disassociate himself from controversy and alcohol problems. In 2005, he was involved in an incident concerning an underaged girl. The authorities received a report of an incident assault on the teenager. His agent denied the claims, saying he was innocent, and threatened to sue the originators of the rumor. Back in 1984, he was sentenced to 12 weeks in jail for drink driving and assaulting a police officer. Which of these football stars did you find the case more outrageous? Let us know in the comments section. See you in the next episode.